I really do believe that this is my top pick for cryptocurrency holders that are holding long term that have big bags that want to drop it into a secure vault ecosystem. What is up, Hash Nation? Today we are talking about the BC Vault, a hardware wallet that could be the very best hardware wallet that I've used to date from a security perspective. If you want to learn more about it, stick around. Let's hash it out. So like I said in the intro guys, today we're talking about the BC Vault, a really cool new hardware wallet that I'm excited to share with you. Now the folks over at BC Vault were kind enough to share a review unit with me so I could play around with it, learn more about how the device works and dig into the technical details so I could share that with you. But for full transparency, it was not paid for this review and they didn't give me any guidance on what I should include in this review just to get that out of the way right up front. The BC Vault was designed by a Slovenian company called Real Security, and they specialize in cybersecurity. So this is their bread and butter, creating secure devices for you to store your cryptocurrencies on. And during the design process, this company, Real Security, went down to the bare bones, looked at the Trezor and Ledger wallets, and tried to find the security holes, some of the things that were criticized about those wallets, and to improve those with their product. So I'd like to introduce to you the BC Vault. Now I'm gonna show you some B-roll footage of me unboxing this thing and some photos and such. And I will also show you a little sequence that I created to show you how to set it up, but it really is super easy and it took me just about a minute and a half to really set this thing up all together. The BC Vault was designed to be a security first device, but they didn't make any compromises in the overall user experience either. And during my time with this hardware wallet, I've definitely been very impressed with the overall quality of the build and the quality of the device itself. It does feel a little bit plasticky and a little bit light, but at the same time, it's meant to store your cryptocurrencies, not get run over by a vehicle. So let's dive into more of the specifics on the hardware wallet itself and the security features that are in the device as well. But really quickly, right before we jump into that, I wanted to tell you to stick around to the end of this video because I will be announcing a really cool giveaway at the very end that might have something to do with BC vaults. So stick around for that. Now the BC vault has a really nice matte plastic finish to it. It's not gonna slip and slide out of your hands when you're using it. It's in a horizontal layout with a 2.42 inch OLED display. And right next to that on the right side of the device, there is a four directional quad directional D-pad that you can use to enter your pin code or your passcode. We'll talk about that more in just a second. And then if you move over to the left side of the device, the left edge of the device, you have a small micro SD port with a one gigabyte SD card already inside. And you also have the USB type C connector port, which is really a great thing to see. I think everything should be USB C at this point. Now that SD card slot, which we'll talk about more in a second is all about backups and being able to back up your hardware wallet contents because this device does not use a 12 or 24 word seed phrase. Stay tuned, we're gonna talk about that more in a second. But now moving to the inside of the device, which you can't see, but arguably the most important part of the hardware wallet is the chipset, what runs the software, and more importantly, what holds your keys. Now, this is another differentiating factor for the BC Vault because they are using something called FRAM, and that is another type of random access memory chip that is storing the keys on the device. FRAM stands for Ferroelectric Random Access Memory, and it is a vast improvement over traditional flash memory for a variety of reasons. First and foremost, it has unlimited read-write cycles. Over time, a normal flashable drive has a certain number of read-write operations that it can handle before it starts to deteriorate over time. And furthermore, those flash devices usually need battery power or some sort of backup over time to help them maintain the integrity of the data. And beyond that, over time, those things just deteriorate in general and the data can lose integrity over time. And probably one of the best features about FRAM is that it is nearly impossible to tamper with these chips and to physically sniff for data, even if you have physical access to that chip. Unless you can get in through the approved software routes, the approved software angles, you're not gonna get access to any of the data, which basically means if someone gets access to your device and takes it apart, they're still unlikely to be able to get anything out of it without knowing your PIN, your password, 
and your wallet passcodes if you have one set. And I think this naturally brings us to the conversation of security and what this device has to offer from that perspective. The BC Vault, like I said just a minute ago, really made no compromises in terms of security. This is a security first hardware wallet. It is a vault for a reason. And one of the first things that makes it so different is that it does not use deterministic wallets, which means you're not gonna have to write down a 12 or 24 word seed phrase to back up your device so that you can restore it later from that seed phrase. Basically, you have a seed key and all of your wallets are derived mathematically from that seed key. And your mnemonic seed phrase, your 12 or 24 words, are derived from that seed key. Hence, they're called your seed phrase. And so when you go to restore your wallet from that 12 to 24 word seed phrase, you are then restoring your seed key and then the device can automatically find the derivative wallet addresses that have been created over the course of your use of the wallet. Now, the BC Vault differs from this completely because it uses non-deterministic wallets. So that means your wallets are created in a completely random way. Non-deterministic means you can't predict, it's completely random or as random as a computer system can be. Now, what this means for security is that if someone were to compromise one of your wallets, they wouldn't be able to compromise all of the other ones as a result. And furthermore, if someone were to compromise your device itself, it would be very difficult for them to get any meaningful information just by getting one key, unlike the Trezor or Ledger style of using deterministic wallets. If you get the seed, you can take everything from the device. In this case, the security layer that you really have to watch out for is your password and your passcode, which are what you use to log into the device. And then furthermore, you have a wallet level passcode that also blocks access to a specific wallet. Each individual private key then in the device needs your pin code and passcode plus the wallet code to sign a transaction. So you have three layers of defense right before you can do anything. So during setup, I'll show you a quick video of this here. You actually use the accelerometer and the inside of the device to randomly shake and rattle and shimmy your device to create this random pattern on the screen. That's basically collecting input data from that shaking. Everyone's shakes and rattles are gonna be different and that's one of the ways that they achieve non-determinism and randomness to create your wallet. The algorithm that they use to generate these private keys to create your wallet is unbeknownst to me and it's probably better off that way but they use a random algorithm to create them. And overall, you can create 2,000 unique wallets on this device all with their own unique passcodes. So I don't think you will ever run out of ability and run out of wallets to store your crypto on. Now, without that 12 to 24 word seed phrase, you're probably wondering, well, how am I gonna restore from a backup? And how do I even log into the device? Well, first and foremost, that password that you create is a normal typed password like you would get for a normal website. So I recommend you do something with a special character, an uppercase letter, and maybe words that are not in an English or other standard language dictionary. And that is to log in on the computer side, on the desktop app. Then to log in on the device, you're also gonna set up a pattern. And that pattern is a certain combination of up, down, side to side, whatever you're looking for on that D-pad. So you're gonna have to enter your password on the computer screen, then your pattern on the device that unlocks it. Then if you wanna issue a transaction or go into a wallet, you're gonna to have to enter another pattern that you set for that wallet. And that is the extra layers of security that they've entered to access your device. Now to backup and restore, that's where that SD card comes in. So what happens is when you initiate a backup from the desktop app, you can upload an encrypted backup file to that one gigabyte SD card, take that out of the device and put it in a safe so that if your device is ever damaged, destroyed, what have you, you can get a new one and restore from that backup. However, keep this in mind, you need to know your original password and your original passcode to use any of these features. So that means if you restore from a backup using the SD card, you will have to know your password and your pin from before so that you don't get locked out of the device. So I recommend keep that password and your pin code pattern on an encrypted file, throw it on a flash drive, put that in your safe along with the SD card for your backup, and then don't worry about it. Of course, SD cards can fail, so I would also recommend maybe picking up a, another $2 one gigabyte SD card, micro SD, and having a backup of your backup just for safekeeping. Now the folks behind BC Vault are so confident in the security of their device that they have shipped every single wallet 
with a private key that actually has a little bit over one BTC now. So they said, if you can break the encryption, you can break the wallet, you can break our algorithms to protect you, then that BTC is all yours. When you first boot up your device, you can see actually that BTC wallet sitting in there and it's basically tempting you to try and attack the wallet, but I think they're very confident you won't do it. And just from security alone, in my opinion, after using it for a while and reading more about it and understanding the device from a technical perspective, I really do believe that this is my top pick for cryptocurrency holders that are holding long-term, that have big bags that wanna drop it into a secure vault ecosystem. And they're not gonna be carrying this around with them every single day and using this on the fly to do trading. If you wanna store long-term, I think BC Vault is a really great option for you. Now, of course, people are always wondering about this. So let's briefly discuss coin support. The BC Vault hardware wallet supports 25 plus cryptocurrencies and more have been continuing to come. So I will show you a list here on the screen of all the coins that are currently supported on the device. But just to let you know, ERC20 tokens are supported as well as custom ERC20 tokens. So if you're a developer and you wanna create your own cryptocurrency and add hardware wallet support, you can always store those on your BC Vault as well. All you need is the contract address and some of the metadata from your contract. The software on both the desktop and on the device itself are really easy to use, super clean. The BC Vault desktop software isn't the prettiest thing in the world, but obviously beautiful user interface comes secondary to good functionality. And the functionality is definitely there. The desktop software is actually available for all three major operating systems. That's OS X, Windows, and Linux. So all of you are in luck, or at least most of you are in luck, unless you're running some obscure operating system but everything also connects with that USB type C connector that I discussed earlier in the video. And finally, the setup process was pretty much a breeze. I will show you a quick time lapse of me setting it up and most of it was just waiting for the device to load through, create the backup, to update the firmware. I did all that stuff at once and took about four minutes. My computer was being a little weird with the USB port, but I switched the port and everything was working just fine. Of course, one feature that is not a part of BC Vault that people are buzzing about is Bluetooth and mobile support. There is no mobile app right now for BC Vault and there is no Bluetooth connections to your phone for this device. Now, I think that that is a deliberate choice. I think that BC Vault was made to be a vault. It was made to store large quantities of cryptocurrency and it really wasn't made to be on the go. Their slogan really says it all. Wallets are for pocket money, vaults are for safekeeping. And this, the BC Vault, is really designed to be your bank vault at home to store your big bags of cryptocurrency. And then you can use another hardware wallet on the go for your day trades or for paying for goods and services, so on and so forth. I think that is the way to do it. So for me personally, I'm gonna move a lot of my cryptocurrency all into one wallet onto the BC Vault and that's gonna stay at home in my safe, nice and secure. And then I'm gonna have a Ledger Nano X when it arrives, when it ships, and that's gonna be my day-to-day -day walking around hardware wallet for trades and for sending cryptocurrency to people when I'm out and about. So I think that's the perfect pairing. You have a vault and then a wallet for carrying around your pocket money, if you will. Now that said, what do you guys think of the BC Vault? Let me know in the YouTube poll above, in the YouTube card, or in the comments down below. I'm really curious what you think of the device and whether or not you're thinking you want to get one. Now, if you are sold and you do wanna buy one, you can find a link to buy the device for 155 US dollars down in the description or the pinned comment below, and you can store your cryptocurrency securely once and for all. This device is definitely going into my day-to-day -day setup and I'll be making more tutorials over time for firmware updates, how to use this for MFA, so on and so forth. So stay tuned for that. And finally, the moment you have all been waiting for, I want to announce an awesome giveaway for all of you, the people who watch my channel, who subscribe to my channel and hang out here with me all the time. Thank you so much. I'm gonna be giving away five brand new BC Vault devices, two lucky winners, and all you have to do to enter to win this subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment down below in the YouTube comments. Let me know, hey, I wanna win a BC Vault and tell me your favorite feature in a hardware wallet and I will pick five random winners to win a BC Vault at the end of, let's just say, a week and a half, maybe two weeks. I'll let the winners know and notify them and we'll be good to go. And hopefully I'll see you in another video, maybe this one right here, or this one right here. And as always, thank you very much for watching my channel, guys. Cheers.